What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fan Club YouTube channel. I'm Will. I'm Austin. And I'm Lawson. We're going to be talking with athletes, entertainers, and creators about how they built a brand for themselves. So please make sure to like, subscribe, leave us a comment, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out. We hope you enjoy this episode. I don't know how to cut it. We'll have to yeah. see when we cut it. Because, up. like, with the micro content. Oh. Did you hit it? Yep. Oh, Quick. my goodness. Quick te technical. That's a great blooper. Can't believe that. What a blooper. He needs help. Get this guy some help. Hey, this is a great intro to the episode. Oh. Uh oh, he's not. Legends. On. What's up, Cooper? <laughs> how we doing? Well, Good. we just had a couple. Our sign just production fell off the issues wall. here. <laughs> start. Look at that. Oh, look at that sign. Come on. Yeah. A little crooked now, but that's okay. Some fresh Prince font right there. <laughs> Morning, Cooper. Morning. Sorry about that. Oh, you're good, man. How y'all doing? <laughs> good. How are you? Great to meet you finally. I know, dude. I love y'all shit. I've been I've been watching oh, for a good. long time. This is uh this is an honor. We love <laughs> Thank yours. Thank you. Yours as well. Yeah, we uh we actually aren't doing an interview today. We just wanted to listen to you play, and we're just going to get a private concert here, we thought. Dude, that's great. Do we, do we have to wear shirts, or I don't know? <laughs> yeah, well, we decided to. He uh, doesn't. If it's just we us decided here. to dress, dress as the theme a little bit here, so <laughs> I don't I don't normally dress like this. That's just for today. Looking very cowboy, man. Are y'all uh, in Minneapolis? Yeah. Yes, sir. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Did y'all like? Yeah. It, what's y'all's story? We we like played college hockey together. Yeah. And then, kind of through COVID, we just started making TikTok videos. And now we graduated into an office and kind of doing the same thing. Started this podcast, um, doing stuff with NHL. So yeah, that's sick. Did y'all go to like Minnesota? Uh, we went to university. We went to University of Wisconsin Superior, but we're nice. in Minneapolis right now. Nice, hell yeah! Man. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. We're some washed up D three hockey players. <laughs> God, wait, <Yep>. no. <laughs> <laughs> You're viral D three hockey players. Viral, yep. That's right. If it wasn't for COVID, we'd never got here. So, hey, we love it, man. There's a little bit of a blessing. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Thanks for doing this. We're really just gonna hang out, chat, and get right into it. Dude, epic, man. Whatever whatever y'all want to hit, I'm here. So Sweet. Well, for those of you listening, welcome back to the fan club. And we're pleased to have our friend all the way down. Are you in Nashville? Yep. Yep. Right now? In Nashville. Down in Nashville, Mr. Cooper Allen. Thanks for coming on. Legends. Happy to be here, man. This is awesome. I, I watch yep. like probably two or three accounts on TikTok I actually watch. And it's you guys, that Dane the Great guy. And Thomas Mack. That's like all I look at that. Know. No so way. there you go. We made the list. That's the, huge. The big three. <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, the big three. And we That's, watch. I what mean, an we honor. watch your stuff all the time too. And like we kind of met through TikTok, which is kind of cool. With how we're even talking to you here today. Like, do you remember? I can't remember how it worked. I think we reached out to you, or did you reach out to us? Um, Dude, it was um, it was after. Y'all did the, uh, the rollerblading video to Can't Dance. <laughs> I was like, these yeah, guys yep. are just awesome. Uh, so I think I messaged you guys and like, you know, as starving artists begged y'all, please, please keep using my sounds in your videos. This oh, is, we, we had so awesome. much fun yeah. making that. We had a blast making that video. Got Frizz to dance. And I think that song was kind of made for us. Dude, it was really like awesome. our first theme. We can't dance. We made so many dancing videos before, and people would always make fun of it, or it would take us hours to learn one. So when that came out, I was like, "Why couldn't we have started with this?" <laughs> I'm I'm here for you yeah, guys, man. That was perfect, <laughs> dude. We tried to do that shit on um on rollerblades and like try to dance, and that like y'all made it look so easy that it, it's impossible. Yeah, we saw your. I saw that duet, and uh, I guess we did make it look easy, but I mean the effort counts. The fact that you actually got on rollerblades to duet us with that video was pretty cool. We were pumped to see that. Yeah, I, I went and paid eight dollars to go to the roller <laughs> rink and hang out with some kids. So it's, it's some dedication. Yeah, we saw you kind of when you put your blades back. You were a little uh, thought it was a bit tougher than you originally thought. I guess. Yeah, I just it made me. It, it affirmed that I should probably never do the ice skating thing. But I, <laughs> I think what y'all do is sick. So. <laughs> 
appreciate it. Well, Cooper, for for those who don't know you, um, who is Cooper Allen? What's your background? How'd you make it to Nashville? Let's hear your before story. Yeah, I'm from North Carolina, uh, Winston Salem. Um, you know, lived there my whole life. Went to UNC Chapel Hill uh, for college, go Heels, and then I just kind of I played music all growing up, all. Middle school, high school, into college, a bunch of bars, cover band stuff. Uh, tried to write some music, but it was mostly just, you know, bar band type gigs. And then, you know, I knew I wanted to get out to Nashville and do music. I just wanted to do the college thing first and, you know, have mm-hmm. big sports and the college experience and all that stuff. So did that. And as soon as I graduated, moved out here and uh, just been kind of grinding ever since, uh, writing and trying to kind of do what everybody moves out here to do. And, you know, we had some things going before COVID, but nothing really. Um, and then TikTok comes along, all that COVID stuff. And, um, you know, my girlfriend, fiance now tells me to get on it. My producer tells me to get on it. and I do. And it's kind of been a full-time job ever since then. And, you know, for, for me and for so many other, others, it's worked in a pretty big way. So it's been, it's been cool, for man. Sure. Yeah. You were, like what we kind of discussed, you were pretty much ahead of the curve with artists kind of showcasing their music on TikTok because beforehand it would like all the big name people weren't really doing it. It was kind of the smaller people kind of gaining traction, but now you just see everybody posting their music on TikTok. Do you find that that's really helps kind of boost your career showcasing your own songs? Well, yeah. I mean, it was, you know, I always say it was a really good time when COVID hit for the industry, not to give a shit about you, (laughs) you know, I was one of those people. And so you just, you know, you couldn't wait around and be like, Oh, when the world comes back, you know, we're going to do XX that we had planned before COVID because we just didn't have any of that stuff. So we just kind of had to, you know, do our own thing and kind of make our own way. And now that TikTok's become so mainstream um, that, and you know, Instagram, Facebook, all the socials are kind of where people are finding a lot of their music now. Um, you know, it kind of has moved from just playlist discovery and radio discovery to they're really finding their favorite freaking artists on an app watching, you know, one minute videos. And that's, it's crazy. And, uh, you know, every artist that pops off, it's, it's good for others because it just kind of legitimizes the platform, I guess. And when you started, how long did it take for you to kind of realize that it was working and get the ball rolling? Um, it was like, it was a couple months because, you know, the first couple months on there, I'm sure y'all know, you just like grind and you get yeah. like 300 views on a video and just like eight troll comments. And then, you know, finally <laughs> you have one video hit and you like see so many followers come in and you kind of get addicted to that a little bit, or at least see that yeah. it's like, you know, I'm getting more followers on this than I ever had on anything else. Um mm-hmm. So yeah, it was, it took a couple months to get like a video to really get going. Then another couple months to get an original song to really do anything. And once originals started hitting, it was like, this is, you know, kind of a legit thing as an artist that I need to do. And then, you know, when Mm -hmm. tour tickets started selling and all that stuff, it just has constantly surprised me, I guess, and how uh, it's it's helped build a fan base and all that stuff. Did you come from a family that was very like musically gifted was this a thing kind of handed down to you were you a a natural born performer because on the social media side of things we've never got to see you live yet but you're so good and so quick at what you do and you just it feels like you have a knack for the camera already so is that something you worked on or are you just always been like that oh dude i was i was the absolute worst at it until (laughs) you know two years ago you couldn't i didn't have an instagram I, i barely did the Facebook stuff, anything. I just I always hated social media. Um, in terms of like my family, nobody um, plays. My my dad is starting to get pretty comfortable behind the camera, which is a little concerning. But uh, that's, that's another <laughs> yeah. story, I guess. His videos are great. <laughs> yeah, dude. He's uh, <laughs> he's he's in diva mode for sure. Um, but yeah, we just always went to concerts and like you know I saw Tom Petty when I was five. That was my first show, and went to All My Brothers, ACDC, you know all these bands we would go see live and, you know, I listened to what my brothers were listening to, what my dad was listening to, what my mom was listening to. Um, you know, we go to kid rock concerts together all the time, just like all the, you know, music and sports are kind of our thing. So I think that's kind of where I kind of fell in love with performing and Mm -hmm. just music. And for some reason I could kind of do it and it's taken a lot of work to 
get better at it to be able to do it, I guess, professionally. But, um, yeah, it's just always kind of a thing around. I guess that, uh, I guess listening to all those different genres really helped you create that trend of you create, uh, changing mainstream songs, turning them into country. Cause you have crushed that on TikTok, dude. And yeah, I, that's like, I posted that first mashup video and I was like, this is the dumbest shit I've ever done in my life. Like, this is, <laughs> this is awful. Um, and it, you know, it just worked, I guess. And we had always done that, you know, bar gigs and stuff. Um, you know, you're playing a four hour set to a bunch of hammered college kids. You got to find a way mm-hmm. to kill some time or else you're going to go crazy up there. Um, so we would just kind of riff on the same four chords and just see how many songs we could spit out and all that stuff. And for some reason it was, you know, me, my bass player, my guitarist, we just had this big encyclopedia of songs in our head or whatever. And it was so useless of a skill before TikTok came along. And then somehow it kind of started paying off. Yeah, because I was going to say, it seems like you have such a natural skill at connecting these songs together. So I figured that you would have been born with some kind of kind of like a Charlie Puth type of thing where you have perfect pitch or something like that, because I don't know, I could listen to songs all day and probably never be able to match like you do. So that's pretty impressive. It was just learned. Yeah, no, no special skills here. Just for some reason, I know like 15 seconds of like a thousand songs or something. <laughs> That's but Not much more. <laughs> That's all you need for TikTok. Exactly, exactly. So you started social media kind of really diving in only the two, year, two or three years ago, I guess, right? COVID, you said? Yeah, March of uh, so, 2020. So besides what has helped, um, what's been the biggest challenge putting music on there, coming up with different videos. Um, and we can touch on the 615 house after this, but yeah, how, how did you really start besides people telling you to do it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a challenging thing. As y'all know, like you post a video and it goes like super viral or something. And you're mm-hmm. like, oh, if this is my thing, I'm going to keep kind of doing this. And then you know, maybe the second time you do it, it goes viral again. And then for some reason you just like get 10,000 views and you want to throw your you know, computer at the wall. Um, <laughs> so it's like always kind of, you know, and y'all have done a good job of this, just always kind of reinventing what you do a little bit, but not like going too far from your, you know, thing that you do. Um, so that's been a challenge. It's just a pretty unpredictable algorithm. And now there are so many people on there that, you know, in the music side, it's, it's pretty competitive to get, a viral video on, you know, on TikTok, but nobody knows why it's competitive. It just is. And like, it's a thing that doesn't make sense and you have not a whole lot of control over. So that's kind of hard. And then, you know, the TikTok artist uh, label that a lot of us get, which I have no problem with, but that's kind of been hard in like some industry stuff, but you know, the, the benefits definitely outweigh, outweigh the cons and all that stuff. Can you dive into that a little bit? The TikTok artist label? Yeah. Uh, it was just such a new thing. I think that, you know, when people don't quite understand something fully, um, you know, you kind of label it as, you know, this is different than what's been done in the music industry. You know, we've never really seen artists be able to break or have huge songs without, you know, the traditional route, at least in country music. Um, so, you know, the, the, TikTok artists kind of started becoming a thing and it's like, are they really real artists or are they just social media things? Can they, you know, actually perform? Can they really write real songs and all that stuff? And I think in time it's kind of, as TikTok's become more legitimate, it's kind of, you know, taking that label away a little bit, even though it's still kind of there. I've never, you know, some people maybe try to shy away from it. I, I think it's awesome because, you know, as long as fans, think what you do is cool. It doesn't really matter where they find you. And if, you know, if I'm a TikTok artist because my fans are on TikTok, but I'm a TikTok artist, who cares? Yeah. And do you don't notice the difference of uh, a fan base that maybe likes you a lot on TikTok? Um, that's different than if you were just a performer. Is there somewhat difference in that? Um, you know, I've, I never had the other fan base other than social media, you know, yet, just because, you know, that's kind of been a pretty new thing for me. But I I think that people on the internet, and it's kind of created a more like, 
I don't know, enthusiastic fan base and they're kind of taking some ownership and, you know, helping careers take off and all that stuff. Cause they're a lot more involved in the process and, and you know, it's fewer gatekeepers and more of them just finding things on their own. So I think it's definitely created, you know, an audience that wants to buy your songs and wants to listen to everything, not just that one song they hear on TikTok or a playlist and, you know, wants to come out and see you in concert and buy your shirts and all that stuff. I, I think it's been pretty awesome for artists and fans. Mm-hmm. And that way they know you a lot better too, not just your music. Absolutely. Because, uh, yeah. And I mean, they, yeah. you know, they see your face. It's a lot mm-hmm. different than just hearing a good song you like, you know, on the radio, they really feel like they're getting to know you. And that's, you know, that's what we want too. That's why we're doing it. Um, so it's like a kind of deep personal connection, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. The, uh, yeah, they definitely get to see your personality other than just music or where you're doing your songs at and all that stuff. But that kind of leads me into my next question with your fans. What was it like being able to share your experience of proposing to your fiance through that video because i just watched that this morning that was a really cool video to see her reaction like that uh, thank god she said yes or it would have gone (laughs) viral for other reasons i guess (laughs) Um, but you know it's just i like to let them in on kind of what i'm going through the the good the bad all that stuff and that was just one of those moments where you know i wanted to do something different for hallie and kind of make it cool and fun and Luckily, we had a song that kind of fit that moment. And, um, you know, whether we had a song or not, I was still going to propose to, you know, my fiance, but it just kind of worked out and was cool. And, you know, just kind of, I don't know, helped further the narrative and, and get fans even more involved, you know, and picking what we put out and all that stuff. Yeah, that song kind of starts leading you a different way so what was her uh reaction after that did she was she wondering where that song was headed or you know we uh <laughs> just don't ask you know it's uh <laughs> we um you know i think we were just so happy that it like you know we just didn't didn't talk about where the mind was going before the uh before the big <laughs> reveal yeah exactly it's clever that's definitely one of the most clever proposals i've ever seen yeah <laughs> super special you got to write that yourself um so since we've used that, used the can't dance song in the rollerblading video, how do you think um, with the video, I think it got like got 200,000 likes or something. Mm-hmm. So a video of us using your song, how does that help you other than the fact people hear the song? Does it actually bring traffic to you? Do people look at the sound and see, hey, this is Cooper Allen? Dude, yeah. Yeah. Um... Audio uses on a song are like the best thing that you could possibly get. Uh, That's why I was so pumped when I saw saw y'all's video. I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. Because, you know, if they see a viral video of y'all doing that sound, then maybe they're going to do it. And more people just using the sound. And, you know, my best streaming songs are songs that have had, you know, 10K plus audio uses on TikTok or something. For some reason, that's just like a big, it's more important than a, video going viral or, or any of that stuff. Um, so that's kind of, you know, getting people to use the song is, is a struggle and, you know, definitely like the number one goal for sure. So are you thinking of that a little bit when you're writing of, Hey, will this do better on TikTok or is this a song for TikTok was, was can't dance made, uh, for that reason? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I kind of, you know, I write a lot of my stuff for TikTok just because that's where my fans are or whatever. Not necessarily like, oh, I think this is going to go viral or this could be a trend or something. Um, but yeah, definitely can't dance. I was like, everybody dances on TikTok. You know, mm-hmm. I can't dance. I'm sure there are a lot of people that can't dance. And so that's where that yeah. came from. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah. More, more than guess. you think. You should uh, <laughs> you should come to a show. It's it's pretty, uh, pretty brutal. <laughs> uh, I would love to see that song play live and see everybody in the crowd. Yeah, it, it's Maybe a bunch a of people like dancers. us. Don't worry. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, like what is the process then of you post a song, you have it on TikTok audio. Like really, I'm unfamiliar with that music world side of – how does it go count towards like Spotify streams or to having a successful song, I guess, uh, does it go beyond TikTok and getting the audio listens? Cause that like, I'm assuming that doesn't like convert to straight up dollars of like getting a 
audio blowing up, right? Uh, no. So it's like, for some reason, and I don't really get it either, but like, you know, if somebody uses your sound in a TikTok video or interacts with a video using your sound, then they're more likely to like get looped in seeing stuff about that song more, if that makes sense. Like that starts showing up on their for you page or whatever. So it's more people get aware of the song. If they're using it, then they made an active decision. Like I really like this, I'm going to use it. Mm -hmm. And so they're more likely to, you know, go and listen when it comes out on Spotify or buy it on iTunes or go to YouTube or whatever. Um, so I think it's more of like an algorithm thing and like a just interest thing that gets people to then go off platform and go actually stream it and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Cause I don't, I don't think TikTok uses count for any sort of stream. I don't think, mm -hmm. or maybe they do. Kinda, but... Yeah. And we kind of talk, it's kind of like another layer to this, to that uh, tornado effect, like as a creator, you have a TikTok and then you have a YouTube and all these different platforms where if one thing does well, it does like carry over into others. I feel like that's kind of a similar thing of now you got audios as well. So if an audio blows up, then more awareness in general, just like benefit the overall, like your brand and your personal brand itself. Yeah, exactly. People ask, I'm sure y'all get the question all the time. Like, do you make money off of TikTok? And it's like, well, not off of like views really, but you know, you make money off of people going to, you know, invest in your brand and, and buy your stuff yeah. and do whatever you're trying to sell on there because they saw you on TikTok. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's get into the 615 house because that's something that um, obviously a lot of people see TikTokers come together. Maybe it's out in LA or something. Um People come together to make videos and just live together and show their lifestyle. But you guys in Nashville made the 615 house, which for those who don't know was, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Cooper, but a bunch of new people to Nashville, musical artists new to Nashville, living together, having fun, making videos. When did that start? How many people were there? And were you one of the founders? Um, so I can't take like a whole lot of credit for, <laughs> for any of that stuff. Um, you know, I was part of that like initial group that went over there and did it, but that was all Chris and Ashley um, kind of okay. came up, Chris Rudiger, Ashley Cook, they kind of came up with that whole idea. And I was just lucky to, you know, I knew Chris pretty well through like playing some bars around here and, um, you know, talked to him about TikTok stuff. And then, you know, he asked me to start doing that with them. Um, so I really just kind of showed up and, and tried to not look too stupid, but um, it was awesome, man. It was a really you know, you kind of met your class of people, I guess. That's what people talk about in Nashville all the time. You know, meet your meet your group that you're going to hopefully kind of climb up that ladder with. Um, and so that was a really cool way for me to meet, you know, people that are still some of my best friends. Like I talk to Thomas Mack every day. Alexander K is one of my best friends. You know, Chris Ashley, all those people. Um, such a good community. And we were all just kind of trying to figure out something new on our own and figure out how to, you know, navigate how we're going to do this thing a little bit differently and, you know, independently in some cases. Um, and it's really, it's been a really cool, you know, launching pad, I guess, for pretty much everybody that was part of that initial group. Um, but it's also still a tool that we use in a community that we still are a part of. And Chris has done an amazing job kind of advancing it now to, you know, help it evolve and, you know, involving new artists and, having new people go in there and Chris even started like his own record label. It's been, you know, from what started as just showing up at a house and making, you know, dumb videos to now everybody kind of has a, a bit of a career out of it. It's been pretty cool. It's amazing. Sounds like a lot more of a productive version of a hype house where like you're actually going in there to move on and for a purpose. Yeah. Whereas like other creator houses, right? You're just, you're in there for a bit and then usually, things go wrong and nothing, you know, ends up happening much of it, but it sounds like you guys run it pretty well where there's actually a, a good system to, to the process of having this house now. Yeah. We, we kind of tried to keep it drama free and, you know, yeah. away from all that stuff. And I guess, you know, we didn't get a Netflix show, so maybe it worked out for them, <laughs> Probably, but <laughs> might be a good thing. Yeah. It means you're, it means Long you're run. drama free. Yep. Uh, Long run game. Thomas and I have definitely talked 
you know, every time we hit a little dip talking about starting up some real, uh, some real fake beef on the internet, but I just, <laughs> I just can't do it. I'm a little afraid of the comments. I don't know if people can buy you and Thomas fighting. No, I know. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> You'd have to sell that pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have the We've acting skills for that. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about doing, getting some beef and that we need to be in the drama yeah. of the TikTok world. So Maybe we'll, maybe me and me and you will have some beef. You and the hockey guys. I was about to say we can go out and do some hockey drills and get get a little physical out there and there see go. what happens. There we go. <laughs> we could do that. Um, you started Cooped Up Records. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that because first of all, congratulations. That's that's amazing. Thank you. And things like that are something that really interests me. So, why did you want to start your own label and? How have you um, begun the process of bringing people in to be signed under your label and your name? And clever name, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, my touring company is Recouped Touring. I'm a little more proud of that. But, um, <laughs> you know, just a good name. But, um, yeah, we just, you know, kind of saw a window, I guess, to get a little more traction independently um, rather than, you know, signing a development deal or something or something where you kind of get put in a phase of one or two years of, you know, let's write, let's mm -hmm. get this sound and then we'll put you out. Then we'll do all that. And I, I just, it, it works for some people. It has worked so well for a lot of people, but for me, it was, you know, we just had some momentum online that I didn't really want to kill quite yet. Um, so we just kind of, me and Victoria, my um, producer publisher just decided to start a label because, you know, we had some money from, new normal. And, uh, we just kind of said, we don't totally know what we're doing, but we know what songs work and we know this internet thing and we're just going to kind of see what happens. Uh, so it's been a really fun, you know, couple of years of doing that. It's, it's fun being your own boss, I guess. It's uh, yeah. fun not having to wait for somebody to tell you it's, it's your time to release music. You can kind of do whatever you want. You know, if you release something that sucks or that doesn't do well, it doesn't really matter. And then if you release something great, it's awesome. Um, and so the, the team's been Victoria and I, um, Morgan, my agent over at WME, uh, hopped on um, about a year and a half ago. They've been amazing. Uh, Jared Holly and Make Wake is my management. Um, and everybody just kind of has this mindset of let's, you know, let's build this. Let's try to headline rooms. Let's try to see what we can do on our own and, and grow you know, this record label and all that stuff. And we haven't signed any like other acts or anything. We don't, we don't have that kind of money yet, but uh, that's definitely something down the road that I would love to do. And I, I think you do need to work with a major label at some point in country, if you want like radio and if you want to play stadiums and all that stuff, but you can really build a whole lot of foundation on your own to bring up your leveraging power, I guess. Yeah, for sure. I was going to say that's a definitely important skill for you and your people um, to know. So when you do go into maybe different talks with people or you get to the point where you want to sign people under cooped up records, um, you have that skill, you know what it actually takes and yeah, you can bring your bit of flair to it too. Yeah, exactly. And you know, it's just, it's just fun to do whatever you want. You know, I'm sure yeah. you guys know being, entrepreneurial and all that stuff it's just like nobody really knows your business better than better than you um at least you know when you're starting out and building and all that stuff for sure yeah it's nice to be able to show up with a cut off sleeve when you want <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to the office and your shows i'm sure we wouldn't be able to do that if we were under someone else's umbrella it's tough having that much swag man <laughs> i don't know if i call it swag yeah no don't call it swag <laughs> So uh, what does your kind of average day look like then uh, off tour? Uh, it's what I like about this is every day is different. Um, but generally, you know, wake up, work for a few hours, go work out, um, usually write about 10 or 11, usually have a write, writing session or two a day. And, you know, those last about three to four hours a piece. You walk out with a song or at least something that seems like it could be a song. Um, then, you know, late afternoon, usually put together some videos and try to figure out what to post on TikTok that hopefully won't flop. And then, um, you know, kind of do some brainstorming stuff at night. 
um, you know, the day's, the day's pretty full, you know, the, the social media stuff, as y'all know, takes a lot of work and you really got to, you can't really let it slip for too long or else, you know, you just kind of fall out of your algorithm or whatever. Um, so yeah, we, we managed to stay pretty busy, but we still got time to, you know, I'll, I'll watch every Carolina basketball and football game and still got time to hang out with friends on the weekends and do stuff with Hallie during the week and all that stuff. So it, it's not, it's not too bad. There's a lot of hours in the day. How do you, uh, you obviously have to be very creative because you got one side is like you're writing mm -hmm. and you probably have to be creative to do that. And then also you have TikTok, which is another kind of creative mindset, especially when things aren't working to figure out what works. Is there anything you do to help that creativity on kind of both sides? Um, you know, not, I don't have any like rituals or, or tips or tricks or anything. It's, it's more just like, I just do it and I just, you know, mm -hmm. try everything and try not to really be afraid if something sucks. Cause you know, 95% of the stuff you create is probably going to be kind of trash, but it gets you to that 5%. That's pretty awesome. Um, so I think just like repetition and getting better at your craft in that process and really, you know, you just got to put, put time into actually working at it. It's like a sport. It's like a job or any craft. It just takes time to, you know, get better at. Yeah, definitely. Cause I noticed about your videos too, that, uh, you often always go back to just thanking your audience, being very, uh, real and announcing a show and, uh, it, it just like you always have that connection no matter what like you have your videos that like your mashups and stuff that blow up but uh i really like that you always come back with just thanking the audience thanking your followers obviously those aren't videos like made for the algorithm that would blow up but it's really cool it's kind of like motivational to see that uh you just making videos about that and posting them where a lot of creators kind of don't take the time to to do that probably because they know that it's not going to be a viral video so they kind of don't bother with it so it is cool that you always do that um is there anything that made you think to do that yeah i mean dude i would you know i would not be able to do this and you know live and eat and play music and write music if it weren't for people that click follow on your page and i think you gotta you gotta always remember that you know whether you get a million views on a video or you know, 10,000 views on a video, those are people seeing your video. And that's, you know, 100 people or whatever, that click the like button and 20 people that commented on it. And you know, that's, you can never forget, um, you know, that those are people that are invested in what you're doing. And they're keeping you around and they're keeping you relevant, because we're in a entertainment business where, you know, we just ha we don't have a career if it's not for people that, you know, listen to our stuff and come to shows. Yeah, that definitely creates some like stickiness to your page of people not wanting to to leave for that. We got some we got some cool some cool diehards that have stuck around for mm -hmm. some reason. So we're uh, we're not complaining. That's the best. We kind of do too. And those people, it's like we just thank them so much every day, and we know them basically for pretty personally now mm -hmm. since two years. And yeah, the same names and faces come keep coming up, and it's just like just appreciate them so much because we wouldn't be sitting here talking to you either if we didn't have people following us like that yeah we'd be working desk jobs and miserable and you know we're just we're not built no. for that shit you know no i don't no. think so um something that caught my eye when i was looking back through your videos was um you used to drive a van from venue to venue yeah and you got surprised with your own tour bus now but what was it like driving a van um one i think that's super cool and shows how real you are driving yourself venue to venue um and you got any funny van stories um you know i would have to think about there i mean every day it was just <laughs> there was some shit in the van you know and it was just whether somebody left like nachos in there overnight or like you know all the times we almost got killed driving in alabama or something no offense to alabama um <laughs> But dude, it was, it, it's, every musician needs to go through that van phase, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, hopping in the car and going to bed at 2 a.m. because you're loading out, not because you're even like partying or anything, and then waking up at six or seven and 
driving six hours to the next place. And, um, you know, I did some driving, my tour manager did some driving and it was just, it made you appreciate, uh, you know, getting to step up and to get a bus and to never take that for granted and save us a lot of money too. We couldn't really like afford a bus last year. So it's nice to, mm-hmm. you know, at least be able to break even on that. Um, but yeah, the van, if I had to do it another year, I would absolutely just die. But um, it was it was fun. <laughs> That's great. That's a lifetime memory, though, too. Yeah. Remembering your roots and how you got literally where you are now. Oh, absolutely. A bus. <laughs> yeah, there's something fun about those stepping stones of mm-hmm. just the the hard life of when you don't have the nice things, and then you can finally get them and then just feels that much better. Yeah, it builds your character. Yeah, exactly. It ages you fast. So, <laughs> well, you can take that bus because. Up to here, min- up to here, up here to Minnesota this spring, correct? Yeah, baby, March fourth. Y'all, uh, y'all the ever tour's go? Tour's coming. Yeah, I can't wait. I love. We've done Minneapolis once, uh, and it was yeah. cold as shit, dude. It was like, as, <laughs> uh-huh. as happens in Minneapolis, but uh, yeah, it was like negative five or something. Um, but that was in December, so I'm hoping first weekend in March, it's more like ten degrees or something. Should be pretty sweet. Do y'all uh, get over there? Do y'all ever go to the Varsity Theater? I've been there once. I'm the only Minnesotan here. Nice. True, but I have been there once. Sorry about the Can't Vikings. Remember man. why? Hey, it's okay. Uh-huh. We don't need to talk about it anymore. I'm I'm a Lions <laughs> fan, so it was pretty tough watching, you know, teams that we beat, you know, lose, yeah. but whatever. Just what happens. At least y'all made the playoffs. <laughs> Barely. Yeah. Um <laughs> speaking about performing, do you have uh, like we've been to Nashville a few times. We have a lot of fans that uh love nashville did you have a favorite spot performing on broadway or have you done that lots obviously not really much lately but beforehand yeah i mean you know not really well, actually we did do it some after covid uh before we really started touring but when i moved here that was like my job um i went and you know did the audition at tootsies at 10 a.m on a saturday and, <laughs> and got that gig okay. and you know usually about six days a week would do um you know, the oh, wow. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. acoustic slot at Tootsie's, Honky Tonk Central, um, Kid Rock's, um, Rippy's, uh, that whole like Tootsie circuit. And wow. God, it was, it was miserable, but it was, um, <laughs> it was a really good, like, you know, experience. And I, again, think every musician should, you know, play in bars and do all that stuff. Um, my favorite spots on Broadway, we kind of, you know, moved up a little bit and started doing like old red, um, which is really good production and they just really care there. Um, and they pay you a little bit better. Uh, wild horse saloon. is pretty awesome. Uh, just like, you know, you feel like you're in like an arena playing on that stage. Um, those were probably my two favorites, but you know, all of them, all of them were fun. And you know, if you ever had a bad day, you just had to think, you know, I, I'm not working at a desk or working for somebody else. I'm literally showing up and playing music and, you know, not even bartending. Like this is, it was cool. True. And the people that are playing bars on Broadway for all those, we've had our fair share of college days down there. And the people who are playing the guitar are like the Beatles to everyone in that bar. (laughs) So no matter who you are, if you can strum a guitar and sing, yeah, people will love you so and if you play on those grind days you just got to remember that you're basically paul mccartney up there and if you play a shania <laughs> twain song people just oh, yeah. thank your god it's mm. awesome <laughs> great yeah, city the and uh, maybe you want to tell our fans about is there any hidden gems off of broadway that you recommend that's not so mainstream okay off of broadway um i still i'm one of those nashville guys that still likes to go to broadway um some people <laughs> talk shit about it but i think it's kind of fun um but off broadway you know red door midtown is great winners and losers is great those are kind of mainstream but um you know love a good bougie roof t- rooftop sometimes a little uh la jackson the bobby hotel has a good one um what else santa's pub is badass um and that kind of that's kind of about it we go to like the same places just over and over again yeah, yeah. same yeah. yeah, I guess we'll have to check those out. We're going to definitely try and get to Nashville soon. So, mm-hmm. Have you had the hot Hattie B's, the hottest chicken 
on I forget what it's called. Oh, it's uh, uh shut the clock, shut the clock, clock up. up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Hattie B's once. I don't know why I haven't been more, and I did not get. I'm such a spice bitch. I just can't handle that stuff. <laughs> oh, so are we? <laughs> yeah. I think it's impossible to eat, but they made us do it. Yeah, yeah, and it was hot. It was like five hours hot. Yeah, you know, the rest of the day was kind of ruined. <laughs> yeah, that's uh. I don't know. I go back and forth on Hattie B's. I think it's a little, a little overrated, but you know, that's fair. I won't, I won't talk crap about a staple. It's touristy. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever go to uh, National Predators games then? Uh, we went to one last night, actually. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. I love Preds games, man. That is uh, nice. We have like a the fan base is awesome, and like they show mm-hmm. up and it's loud and rowdy, and I don't know. And I think I don't keep up with hockey as much as I should, but you know, I think we're like a little over five hundred in playoff contention they do a great job oh, yeah Bridgestone. that was a lot of fun i uh i threw the catfish on the ice <laughs> after the anthem that's, that's big time man <laughs> oh yeah it was real real slippery and i knew everyone was watching me so i was a little nervous but i did get it over the glass you almost so, hit someone on yeah. toronto maple leafs too <laughs> hey clutch players make clutch plays man <laughs> love it <laughs> well great do you want to try yeah Plus. so let's talk about the matchups a little bit yeah and we were actually thinking we wanted to try doing one we're not we don't have two years of practice or anything like that but we want to give it our shot i love it um if we can't do it i don't know can you do one live too or how does that work i think we just need to get into it all right you have a favorite instrument you want to use let's do uh let's do blurred lines i think that's an easy an easy one for the first time here don't be Uh, afraid to if we're uh a little slow. Don't be afraid to just take over. <laughs> do we go? Do we go in a circle, or how should we do it? Hop in, right? Like pitch perfect. I can hear it. Who's starting? Um, I think sleeveless cowboy starts. All righty. Uh-huh. Um, okay, let me think. Let me think of a song. Uh-oh. Do uh. <laughs> He's joking. All right, I got one. I'm going off the rails on a crazy train. <laughs> yes. Hey, hey, hey. Two trailer park girls go around the outside. Around the outside. Around the outside. Around the outside. Got the bobber in the pond going up, down, up, <laughs> oh, down. <wow. laughs> Baby, baby, oh, like baby, 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 ooh, oh. <laughs> who let little. the dogs out? Wow. Who, 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 who? All right, Coop, take it away. <laughs> okay. Since you've been gone, I can't breathe for the first time. Oh. Oh, this is so tough. <laughs> oh, my tough. goodness. I think hey, we failed we, our tryout. We gave it a try. I think we failed our that Nashville tryout. Good, <laughs> that was, uh, that was a pretty good 45 seconds, guys. Yeah, we did go on for 40. It wasn't a three-minute mashup, but it was a 45-second mashup. Yeah, we will. can clip that. We'll post yeah. that one up. Yeah, we can still clip that. The up-down kind of changing tempo is getting a little experimental with it. <laughs> yeah. It cool. yeah. I don't know why <laughs> Who Let the Dogs Out pops into my head. I haven't heard that, that song in years. <laughs> you can never go wrong with the Baja Men. True. <laughs> well, we did our best. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to do one in uh, in person up in Minneapolis. Oh, that would be a blast. Get That'd you cool. on stage. We'll practice. Oh, yeah, on thing. stage. We'll practice before March. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> great. We well, really appreciate oh, you shit. and for you coming on. Um, it's an absolute blast getting to learn a little bit more about you and your life in Nashville and where you're heading. We're excited to keep following along on your journey. Um, we appreciate you following along with us. We somehow made the big three list of your mm-hmm. TikToks, but, uh, yeah, just thank you so much. Um, Cooper Allen, everybody, he's incredible. If you want to plug your tour dates? I think everyone should know, but. Yeah, no, dudes, first, thank y'all, man. Thank y'all for uh, caring enough to have me on here and for, for always being good to me. And, you know, as as y'all said, I love your stuff. So uh, we're, um, tour kicks off in March. Uh, we'll be in, you know, Minneapolis. We'll be in the Dakotas. We go up to Canada. We do 
some Texas, some Oklahoma. We're kind of all over, and we'll be touring all year, so we'll we'll probably be around uh, be around the listeners' cities at some point. But mm-hmm. uh, we gotta we gotta make something happen when we're up there. Sounds good to us. Definitely, we'll yeah, that'd be awesome. If you make another song about people not being able to dance, we'll make sure to uh, be involved in that one and make another dance with it. Yeah, we'd love to promote the shit out of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe a, I Can't Sing one would fit us well, too. Yeah, yeah I love <laughs> All right, for, for you guys, anything, man. Hey, we really appreciate you. And, yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, thanks so much. Good luck on the tour. Dude, thank you, dudes. We'll, we'll talk, talk soon. Yep. Yeah. See you. Throw um, out there. Well, that was great. Yeah, I, I think I say, "Well, that's great" every time, but it's that fine. was. It's fine. I actually see Cooper as he's just a cool guy. Oh yeah, he'd Very be cool. so he'd fun be to hang so out with. Yeah, I was gonna say he'd be great to hang out with. Very, I think he's really smart too. He mm-hmm. knows what he's doing and what he's talking about, and he's been through the challenges of probably not growing as fast as he once was, especially on social media. But we've been through that too. It's just the way that it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I think he, uh, yeah, he was very uh, much a connecting someone, a person that you can really connect with, even though he's an artist and we're from the sports world and everything. I felt mm-hmm. like um, just very relatable and not as different as it seems to be. Yeah. Like third guest, I found all three of our guests have had great, just kind of have that energy and passion to what they're doing and stuff. And it's really, kind of nice to hear and cool to see their process of how they get things done where they're at today. I thought it was really interesting um, that he was so passionate about going and representing himself with his music label Mm -hmm. because a lot of people are definitely sell out um, and then they have zero control. And yeah, like you said, it works for some works for, but doesn't work for others. But the fact that he's so, Passionate and confident in him, in himself shows that he really does care. Yeah, I feel like he can do that too because of what he probably knows what he has on TikTok and his mm-hmm. personal brand is worth saving. And I think I'm sure that gives artists more confidence in doing their own thing, kind of like building your own clothing brand or whatever it may be that when you have this, he's got like 8 million followers. So having that behind him, doing all this is i'm sure is a good help for taking that decision to doing his own record label yeah yeah it was kind of like us turning down barstool for the podcast that did not happen just kidding (laughs) that didn't happen (laughs) no but yeah we hope to keep building that too with our own brand and Mm -hmm. see where it takes us we got to see him yeah really would love to see him in concert Mm mm-hmm be good to hang out. Have them at the office, maybe. Mm-hmm. I want to go on the tour bus. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, that'd be cool. That Let's go on a tour through the Dakotas with them. Through the Dakotas, head on to Fargo. He said he's heading to the Dakotas. I think after Mini, he might be going to Minneapolis. Sorry, hmm? Canada. Hmm. Head back up there. Going to, Ottawa. Sold going out. to Ottawa. He sold out all his Canadian shows. So oh. cool. Yeah, that's I don't know. It's pretty badass. What a cool life. Yep. Should have worked harder in music as a kid. <laughs> I was never never played one instrument. No. I mean, I play guitar, but never would I have been able to perform. Not even close. We were terrible at the mashup. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was bad. We choked. Well, I, like, I don't know. We just I didn't did... even know what song to start with. That, yeah. that beat threw me off. And then I was like, well... Now I got a. I'm on pressure. You know, Cooper's that, watching me. The shirt made you go first. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I paid the price for wearing the shirt and came up with crazy train. Going. Yeah, that's that's all right. We'll get better. Mm-hmm. Maybe in March we'll be. We'll impress them with a really good one. That'd be good. Yeah, let's work on that, and then when we come back in March, we'll we'll prove it. Let's prove take it to a you free, guys that we class. can do a mashup. A mashup yeah. class. And uh, if you wanted to see what Lawson was wearing for this interview, you can go and check out our Instagram and TikTok page as well as YouTube where all our content is going to be in video form as well. Yes. If you are an audio only listener, there are some benefits of going to YouTube and watching these because such as the big, big (laughs) blooper I had before this episode. Yes. 
I was almost catastrophic. Brand new sign. About yeah, yeah. two minutes. Check it out. Two, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll save it for you guys to go check out. Mm-hmm. Maybe you didn't catch it on camera, so no one even needs to know. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, we'll put it on. It'll be somewhere. Okay. Just follow. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> follow we, to see uh, me mess up. Want to wrap her up, Will? Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for coming, tuning into this episode of the Fan Club. We greatly appreciate you. Lost and Frizz, great job. It's been a pleasure. Cuddy and Yelly, thank you, sirs. Yep. Very cu- Yelly, actually, fun fact, I texted him off my computer during that episode. See if he could go grab my cell phone. Yeah, I've seen you doing this. He was doing this. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and he started <laughs> filming me. But anyways, too long. Of a- Midwest goodbye. Thank yeah. you guys thank so much you. for listening. We appreciate you all. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe. And please always leave a comment with feedback, questions, anything you'd like. Really appreciate you. And Cooper Allen? We're a fan. We are a fan. Cuddy, sign us out. (laughs) 